Hello, anybody home? <laughs> Aren't they the cutest? Oh my goodness. My female blooms on my Jack of Diamonds. This year, Jill of Diamonds, for the time being. They're about to go, but I wanted to let you hear how tough the bloom is from that little hood that I consider a little bow beep hood. Too cute. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Thank you for being here. If you're new to Catacetinae, I hope this video will break it down very simply, very vanilla. We won't go into complicated details, but we'll also go into mistakes that you avoid right off the bat and don't do what I did. Secondly, thank you, Danelle Gillan, for the request of this video. I hope I do it justice. And I hope that growing catacetinae in future will be fun, rewarding, and abundant. <laughs> and that's not even the bigger one. There we go. Let's step back a little bit. Right. I'm going to start off with you're getting your first catacetum in. Let's just say you get a single bulb because that is what can happen. You order one, you pay quite a lot of money for it, which is kind of surprising because they are so easy to propagate. I do not understand why they are so expensive, but they really are. And then you get a bulb. If you're lucky, you'll get a single bulb this size. If you're not lucky, you'll get a single bulb. Let's get down there, this size. And that would be disappointing, but it is still going to bring out a new growth in the spring. The ideal time to buy a catacetinae here in Europe, let's say everywhere else in the world as well, but if you're in Europe, is at least January, February, because by that time you will get a bulb that is hopefully still in dormancy. Maybe you'll get a bulb that is just starting a new growth. So spring is the best time to get one because you can pot that bulb up in any media that you want. It will come rootless. No worries, these things chuck out new roots with every single new growth. So a single bulb in an envelope, trust me, don't worry about it. It's just the price that freaks you out. And when you get something like this, you're like, um, okay, this is not what I was expecting, but that is how they propagate. That is how the nurseries will send them to you. And I say, if you're lucky because that is the easiest way for you to set up your catacetum in the grow method that you have for the rest of your orchids. Or you can start a whole new grow method to test a grow method out. You can see I have two different grow methods and there's reasons for that. We'll get there. If I don't circle back on a thought, please, please comment below because I can get a little bit complex. I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. So. This is not in any way with notes. I am ad lib just because I love them so much and I wish that more people would grow them. The only thing being, of course, the matter of space. However, if you have a mild summer climate between April and October, you can arrange for them to be outside. Not a problem whatsoever. So you've got your first bulb of a catacetum. Yay, or maybe not. You might be disappointed single bulb. Don't worry. Get it into a pot and stake the bulb that you've got very firmly into the pot and keep it above the surface of the media. That way a new growth when it starts it's not buried. Then you leave it alone. Ideally for as long as you can hold off. The best time to start watering if you have a clear pot. Let's just pretend this is a healthy specimen but this is what you would get. You'll get a new growth coming out and you can see how shriveled the bulbs will get, but let's just pretend, okay? New growth coming out, new roots will start. Don't worry about it. Let them do their thing. You can watch them grow all the way. Do not water, leave it alone, even as the bulbs shrivel. And eventually when the root is all the way down here, all the roots that you can see are growing right down, like halfway down into the pot, then you can start watering. Prior to that, the roots will rot. So I'm saying this as a very, very basic, basic application with regards to catacetums, cycnogas, anything like that. I find that the crosses are very easy to get to grow successfully and bloom. It's when you get into the species or the cycnodes, then it becomes a little bit more finicky. 
But what we have on the market right now, especially in Europe, we're mainly dealing with crosses. So here's the thing, careful with the watering right at the beginning. Don't make the mistake to think my bulb is shriveling, I need to water. That bulb may really actually also die off completely, but your new growth is the future of your orchid. If you water too soon, you may lose all of it, or you may set the orchid back considerably more because you will lose the roots of that season of that new growth. So that's the only difficulty timing the watering. Having a clear container at the beginning will help a lot. You can monitor the length of the roots and they always say, let the growth leaf out. Like you see in the back there, let's pretend again, that's a new growth. Let it leaf out to a considerable amount before watering because that would indicate roots are in the pot. This of course is a different case scenario, but it explains what I'm trying to say well. If you have, for example, one that is already established in the pot, it is possible to repot a catacetum every single year. You can chop off the roots, you can save the bulb, you can put it on the shelf, you don't have to worry about it. The moment you see new growth starting in spring, then you pot it up again, stake it, and you're off and ready to go. I do not repot my catacetinae every year. I leave them be in their pots until such a time when the pot could be a little bit too small, as is the case with my after dark black pearl here. I have a second lead growing this year. It's up against the pot. And um, <clears throat> yeah, look at this. <laughs> Next year, this one is going in a bigger pot unless I see a new growth coming out of the sides and then I can still leave it in the pot, depending on what it decides to do in the back here. It may push out another growth around the side. That'll just be something we'll have to wait and see. But there is no need to repot your catacetum every single year you can, especially I would say if you're growing in organic medium and you're using a lot of sphagnum moss, because the orchid has to be constantly watered during its growth phase, it is so thirsty, then it may be a good idea to repot every year because that sphagnum moss will have broken down by the end of a season, depending on the size of your orchid. And again, that's not a problem. You take it out of the pot, literally just chop off the bottom of the roots, whether they're alive or not, and then put it back in a pot, fresh sphagnum moss around it, let it stay dormant like that for as long as it wants. Once it starts a new growth, it'll wake up in fresh media. But yes, if you're only using sphagnum moss in a pot with a catacetum, then I would say definitely change that moss out because it will be tired after what this orchid does to it and how much fertilizer you're throwing into it during the season to get it to size. Now, a lot of people also put in Osmocote slow release fertilizer into their catacetum pots and I've done that. These two candidates here in the back, they have had slow release fertilizer in their pots for the first year. They are now in the pot three years. So of course, my first year slow release fertilizer has been used up. That means year two and three and every subsequent year that they're in the pot, they have to be actively fertilized with regular fertilizer and a lot of it, or just push back some of the top media and put fertilizer in. But that would, in my opinion, be counterproductive to the roots because that is exactly what happened to my Jumbo Mickey here. It was growing very, very well. Slow release fertilizer in the pot. I did a repot early this season in 2021, and I added a little bit more of slow release fertilizer, put the orchid back in the pot, left some roots because they were still viable. And hey presto, I miscalculated the timing for my first flush to incorporate water into the pots. That activated the slow release fertilizer. All the crystals, the minerals, salt deposits wicked up to the top. The new roots that were growing down into the pot burnt. And that is what happened with this orchid. Now, I don't think I've lost this orchid but I have set it back considerably. So this bulb, even though it's a new growth, 
It has not amounted to anything. I believe I will get a new growth out of this bulb. And judging by the size of the bulb back here, I will get a new growth out of this one. But for the season of 2021, these are really messed up considering the slow release fertilizer triggered sooner than the roots were actually ready to go. The minerals soaked up and that destroyed the roots of the season and we are left with what the orchid could achieve prior to watering. So you see, my growths in the back here have expanded a little bit simply because they're using the energy from the back bulbs. This is not how big they were back in the day when I started watering. But this is also a smaller orchid compared to the ones we see over here. These are huge. The bulbs themselves are enormous. So you need to understand, do you have a seedling? Then be more careful. Do not add any slow release fertilizer until the orchid is of size. Or do you have a mature bulb? Then do add a little bit of slow release fertilizer if you want that extra boost. If you are a beginner and you're not sure about it, err on the side of caution. Do not add any slow release fertilizer into the pot. You are much safer that way. And it is not the goal at the beginning to get the biggest bulb that you can produce. The goal at the beginning is to make sure that your orchid, no matter what bulb size you get, produces a substantial growth increases in bulk with more energy. Normally the hybrids will bloom for us, even with one reserve bulb, but wait, be patient and wait for the next year to have an established catacetone in your pot. And then you can play with slow release fertilizer. Once the orchid has enough reserves, because if something were to go wrong, you might actually lose the orchid the next year. So the slow release fertilizer is a great help for these super, super high fertilizer quantity required orchids. <laughs> I mean, they really need a lot of it, but they need a lot of water as well. So that really helps us in the pots, but it is a detriment as well. If you get the watering timing wrong and it activates and the minerals come up and reach the newly grown roots, and then those are history and the catacetone season is over for that specific orchid. So for my after dark black pearl here, you can see the growth increase of the bulbs over the years that I've had it. This one being the tallest, the longest. It's already starting to shrivel a little bit. That is normal, don't worry, that's fine. The only thing you will see in the difference here is that the bulb behind it, the peak is right here it has not reached its maximum size of last year. And that is because the slow release fertilizer in this pot is completely depleted. And I fertilize no more than 300 parts per million every time the reservoir is empty. And 300 parts per million obviously was not the same kick as what it had last year with 300 parts per million, plus still active slow release fertilizer in the pot. So I might need to address this orchid again next year. What I'm going to do is test out putting slow release fertilizer into the reservoir, but then I have to be super, super cautious that the reservoir never dries out, which this year I have been not neglecting, but surprised by how quickly my reservoir goes empty. This was filled this morning a little bit higher than what the pot is so that when I settled the pot back into the mask, the inner pot actually rested on the water and it is at <laughs> two centimeters, two fingers of depth. That was this morning. So it was empty when I poured more water in this morning and I've already got it depleted right now. And that is the biggest factor with catacetone is Water, water, water. If you fertilize, great. Careful though, in the beginning with your fertilizer, you don't want to ruin the roots. Sometimes less is more just to get an orchid established. If I were to mess this orchid up now, for example, I have all these reserves in the back. It'll give me a new growth. But that is why 300, to my understanding, from what I'm seeing now, it is not reaching the same potential as last year. 
300 parts per million plus the slow release fertilizer that I had refreshed a little bit. The danger is convenience here. You want to pump the orchid full. You want to get a nice big growth that you see everywhere, really nice big growth. You want to replicate that. That can happen too soon. The slow release fertilizer will activate too soon and the roots are going to go down. And I think I've repeated that now three times because that happened to me for the first time this season. I had not ever had a catacetinae go down the way my Cygnotes Jumbo Mickey did. Another thing, let me get in a little bit closer with regards to the leaves. These leaves will fall off, yippee-yay. If they get burnt during the summer, no problem. They're gonna fall off anyway when the orchid goes dormant. If the orchid gets enough water, they will start producing a sticky, happy sap and a lot of it. It is so abundant that mine attracts bees and hornets and maybe you've seen some ants walking around on it. I've disturbed them now, but I've got ants there. And what you see on the back now, white, those are happy sap crystals that have dried because I've stopped showering this orchid. So when you see a leaf, let's say in your season, you see a leaf growing and you see it looking like this, where are you? There, let's try another one. There, let's do this. You see all those yellow spots in there? All that yellow? That is not bugs, that is not spider mites. That is happy sap that has dried on the back and it leaves the marks on the front. So this is no insect issue at all. A lot of people shower their catacetinae during the hot months of the year. I do too, but I've stopped doing that now as it's cooling down. I don't want to affect anything anymore. Whatever is on the leaves, I don't really care. They have done their job. The orchid is now just really bulking up and that's when she needs the most amount of water is when that bulb starts to swell to size. So I'm not bothered about the aspect of the leaves anymore. I didn't get any sunburn on these this year. They got sunburned last year. Well, it wasn't a problem because these leaves are coming off anyway. I got some sunburn on the Jumbo Mickey. Jumbo Mickey got hit hard this year, which is a real, real shame. But you can see, let's just say, this is a female spike. Female blooms usually come somewhat more green than the color of the male blooms with a hard hat and a very strong spike. It is possible in the back here, I'm getting a male spike. Too early to tell, but from the size of that nubbin, that is a much smaller size than what came out when this spike was a nubbin over here and produced the female spikes. And Discovery Nation here, together, look at that. There's two more somethings coming out of this bulb. I believe those will be male spikes. I got the female spikes on this one last year, no problem whatsoever. It bloomed beautifully, and then later in the season, I got a male spike, which I promptly snapped off. So we'll see what my Jack of Diamonds will do if I'm gonna get three spikes out of her this year. But. Danielle and anybody else that's watching, I know I'm long-winded. There's a lot of detail with regards to catacetinae. However, it is not that complicated. If you're not entirely sure, don't go with pots that you can't see the roots at. Go with pots, whether you use the PET method or any other media, LECA, just LECA will do fine. Semi-hydro format, watch the roots. Let them go all the way down, like all the way down to more than halfway of the pot. Don't worry about what's shriveling in the back. Let the growth leaf out a little bit and then start pouring water through. Don't worry about too much happy sap. If you've got your orchids outside, let nature deal with it. The ants will come, the bees will come, and they will take care of the happy sap. If you have excessive happy sap, don't worry about the marks that it leaves on the front. It's not a problem. It's not a detriment to the orchid. The leaves will drop. If you've sunburnt your leaves, not a problem. They're gonna fall off anyway. And there's plenty of leaves to go around. The orchid can do what it has to do. So again, there's so many not a problem with this orchid. The one thing is roots. Watch out for the slow release fertilizer. Watch out for the convenience factor. Sometimes it's best to be a little bit more hands-on than just set it and forget it. 
That's the recommendation I can give with regards to catacetinate. There is a fabulous channel. I'm going to put the link in the description below. Stephen Van Campen Lewis. He's got that nailed down. His catacetinate are beautiful, remarkable. He has a much bigger collection than I have. Lots and lots of information as well, but I wanted to really break it down too. These orchids are not a problem on four out of five points. The one point is get the watering right. And the second point is the complacency, wanting to use the convenience factor of slow release fertilizer. Yeah, that could be an issue. It was in my case in this season of 2021. We'll have to wait and see what Jumbo Mickey does in 2022. I think I've saved one of the pieces. I may have saved two, but it's going to take another two years before that even blooms. Anyway, I wanted to try the PET method out. It was something I was very curious about, but my self-watering and LECA is going so, so well. I didn't want to change my setup to do the PET method in the back, but I had a candidate, so I went for it. Daniel, once again, I appreciate your request. I really hope this was helpful. Not too much jibber jabber, not too much talking in circles. And I hope I got a point across as little nugget of information that will help you with the growing of catacetinae. Anybody else that has watched this video, I really appreciate your time. Leave your questions in the comments below. I can get into more detail. I can go down more rabbit holes. But for the basics, this is the video that I wanted to give to Daniel Gilan based on his question. Have a wonderful day, everybody. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here. Please, please stay safe and take care. Bye.